In our politics lead, a battle is brewing on Capitol Hill as new House Speaker Mike Johnson is pushing to tie aid for Israel to billions in cuts to the IRS budget, money that had been allocated under the Inflation Reduction Act, or that's what it was called. That bill already appears to be on a path to nowhere as House Democrats and Senate Democrats say they will never support it, the Senate Democrats obviously being much more important since they control the Senate. CNN's Melanie Zanona is on Capitol Hill. And Melanie, you've been tracking this battle over aid to Israel all day. Are, are House Republicans, are all of them uh, behind the bill the Speaker Johnson's pushing for? Well, almost all House Republicans are behind this bill, except for two of them, Thomas Massey and Marjorie Taylor Greene, have both said they would vote against an aid package for Israel. But Senate Republicans are really divided. In one corner, you have GOP leader Mitch McConnell and defense hawks like Lindsey Graham, who say it is in the interest of national security to do a broader package that includes Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, border security money. But then in the other corner, you have Senate conservatives who say they don't support more money flowing to Ukraine, and they want to see Ukraine and Israel Israel delinked, and they also are worried about undermining the new spike speaker, Mike Johnson. So this issue has really pit Mitch McConnell against his own party and put him in line with Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer. Let's listen. The House GOP package is woefully inadequate, has the hard rights fingerprints all over it, making aid to Israel, who just faced the worst terrorist attack in history contingent on poison pills that help ultra-wealthy tax cheats. And we'll see uh, if the bill comes out of the House, and if so, what kind of margin it has. Um, my own view, I just expressed, is that we need to tra treat all four of these areas, all four of them, Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and the border. So the House and Senate are really on a collision course here. The House is looking to pass its Israel aid package as soon as Thursday. The Senate is teeing up that broader package. Unclear when it will get a vote. Could be sometime next week. And meanwhile, government funding expires in just three weeks. So Congress doesn't have a lot of time to figure it out, Jake. All right, Melanie Zanona, thanks so much. I want to bring in Eric Erickson, the host of the Eric Erickson Show. Um, Eric, uh, you just heard Melanie Zanona's report. Uh, House Republicans under Speaker Mike Johnson uh, working on a bill that would tie Israel aid to $14 billion in spending cuts um, that had been allocated to the IRS uh, to, you know, crack down on tax cheats, et cetera, et cetera. Senate Democrats said that would be dead on arrival. I have to say, just hearing what Mitch McConnell said, uh, supporting aid for Israel, aid for Ukraine, aid for Taiwan, and uh, strengthening the border that just sounds like four things that Republicans would be in favor of. I'm kind of confused why House Republicans wouldn't be in favor of it. Yeah, look, there's a division as to how much to fund, and I think they support almost all of them, but we do have a problem on our hands as a nation. We're rapidly getting to the point where the bond yield is going to push us to all of our revenue coming in is going to have to just pay debt service. So Republicans are starting to think we've got to cut. They've contributed to the problem and should be honest about it. But as much as I'm with Mitch McConnell on wanting to fund these things, I also do see we're headed towards a serious fiscal crisis in the country and do need to start having the conversation about what to cut. Even um, if the aid for Israel and, and Ukraine were decoupled, do you think Speaker Johnson would be willing to, to bring a vote on a bill for Ukraine aid to the floor? Because there's obviously majority support for it if you include Democrats and Republicans. But the question is, would a Speaker Johnson be willing to bring the vote to the floor, even if he opposed it, knowing that it would pass? He has said he would in the past, and I suspect he would. Uh, I'm told behind the scenes he's sympathetic to funding Ukraine. His concern is the, the waste in, in graft in Ukraine and probably needing an inspector general tied into overseeing the money. At the same time, he's been amenable to funding Ukraine in the past. He's been very strong about supporting Ukraine in the past. Uh, obviously, the dynamics have changed with him in the Speaker's chair, but you've got a majority in the House that want it, and there are mechanisms in the House for a majority to get something to the floor, even if the Speaker doesn't want it. And I suspect you'd see moderate Republicans and Democrats unite in doing that if the Speaker doesn't allow and control the vote. How do you see Speaker Johnson? Do you think that he's going to be Remember, it's, you know, Speaker of the House, not Speaker of one party or the other. 
Do you think he's going to be somebody that will be able to work with Senate Democrats, work with President Biden, come up with compromises, obviously, you know, push for what he wants, but ultimately uh, meet in the middle, ultimately strike bargains? Or, or, or do you think he's, he's ultimately more of a Jim Jordan type? I, I think he's between where Jordan and McCarthy were. I, he will cut the deals that need to be cut to keep the government, government governing. But at the same time, he's gonna fight harder than McCarthy would. Uh, he's not willing to shut everything down and go for broke. Uh, he does understand he's in a precarious position with moderate Republicans as well. Uh, but he is gonna fight harder than I think conservatives expected McCarthy would. Uh, because um, again, it is something that we as a nation have to deal with, Jake, that uh, we're about to be in a position where 100% of revenue to the government goes just to debt service, so we won't even be able to fund anything without issuing more bonds, accumulating more debt, uh, and that's gonna put us in a real world of hurt. So we've gotta be mindful that I want all these things funded too, more aggressively than he does, but I also realize where we're headed as a nation financially, interest rates probably going back up again tomorrow. Yeah. Senate Republicans appear also uh, divided on whether aid for Israel should be tied to uh, aid for Ukraine. Uh, take a listen. Well, if we're going to have a piece of legislation that actually becomes law, it's going to include support for Ukraine as well as Israel. It's uh, not acceptable to abandon Ukraine. Uh, that would be devastating to uh, our interests around the world. We have a Republican um, majority in the House, and so we ought to be listening to what they want to do. And my understanding is Speaker Johnson has been clear. He is going to not put Ukraine aid together with uh, aid for Israel, um, and I completely agree with him. How do you think Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell should, should handle this predicament of a House Republican uh, conference that, that just views this differently than he does? McConnell is an expert at doing what they call jamming the House, uh, sending over what he wants on a timeline that makes it unavoidable to get. And I suspect you'll see those Republicans and the Democrats jam the House on this. Thanks to Matt Gates, they dragged the speaker fight out for so long. We're within about two and a half weeks of our government shutdown. And that puts the Senate in the driver's seat. They've been there all along plotting while the House Republicans were in chaos. Advantage goes to the Senate. Taking um, what is, is playing out here over aid to Israel, how do you see this going when the House and the Senate and the White House need to come to an agreement over a bill to fund the government in, in just a few weeks? I, look, I suspect what you're going to find is, is they will pull some of the Israel-Ukraine funding out. They will deal with it together as a separate piece of legislation, and they'll kick the can down the road for the larger spending issues until January or April, coming up with a continuing resolution. That was Kevin McCarthy's plan. Mike Johnson sounds like that's his plan as well. So they'll deal with everything, uh, but they've got to slow the train down a little bit thanks to the chaos we've had for the last few weeks. Things will get funded. I doubt the government's going to shut down. Uh, and we will just kick the can down the road further. Congress's favorite game, kick the can. Eric Erickson, thanks so much. Yep. Good to see you, sir.